Hi, and welcome to a brand new eShop video. In the last video of our cybersecurity series with Jess from Soroku, we learned about what happened when a local authority fell victim to a very serious cyber attack and lost 95% of its data. You'll hear from Jez about the key learnings from the council's very own debrief on the incident, how to plan, how to communicate, and how to recover. We have also got a very useful cybersecurity cheat sheet that you can download, which summarizes Jez's advice and provides links to additional resources. Now, let's hear about what happened from Jez. We're going to talk about a local government uh, incident. Now, I've we've had a full debrief from this um, local council, but at the moment it is still restricted um, and so I cannot um, talk about who they are and I'm not going to go into the full detail. But regardless of that, I pulled out some key points that this council were brave enough to, to share. So, what was the scenario? Very basic and very, very common. It was an out of hours ransomware attack which is encrypted around 95% of the local authority data. Personal shared drives together with work devices were unusable. Happened over a weekend, IT did pick it up. However, well, regardless of what they tried to do, by the time everybody came into work on Monday morning, they had nothing. And I mean nothing. And they've entered into a world of pain. As a local authority, all the services that you're clearly responsible for, they could not deliver in the way that they had been. So what points do you need to consider? And I've taken these in the order that these key learning points have been presented in their debrief, which I think works really well. So immediate considerations for a senior leadership team being involved in this. This is all part of planning and you need to have a plan. And however good you think your plan is, the advice from this local authority is, it isn't, go back and have another look at it. So, do you have out of our out of hours arrangements. And think about that across your all of your capabilities. It's not just IT, but what can you do out of hours if you need to? Because criminals, unfortunately, are quite good at this as much as I hate giving them any credibility. They won't attack you on a Tuesday morning. It will be over the weekend. How will you communicate with your partners in an attack? During that attack, how do you communicate? What are your methods of communication? Where's all that information stored? Do you have easy access to records for your key systems, services and office locations? What backups do you have? Now with your plan, one, do you have it? But do you regularly discuss it? And cyber security needs to be an individual element of your risk register. You can't just be bolted together with some other stuff. This is massive. So, some key learnings again, cyber incident planning. Do IT leads and business continuity planners in your organization work together to prepare for these eventualities? And I mean really work together. Okay, IT don't own this risk at all. They are the technical strategic advisors. This needs to be owned at an appropriate level. You know that around risk. So who owns business continuity? Do they sit with IT and make sure they understand each other and what each other is going to do and what it means to each other? What are you doing to educate yourself and your staff about cyber risk and impacts? What staff awareness training are you doing? What senior leadership training are you doing? There are lots of options out there. Law enforcement provides an awful lot of support to local government and it doesn't cost anything. And there are other options. But if we're asking for your staff to be aware, you need to teach them. If we're asking for you as senior leaders to be aware, you need to organise to teach yourselves. You need to understand this. You don't need to become a technical expert. You just need to understand the basics so that you've got a grasp of it and your staff have. When the worst happens, what are the expectations of your IT department? Are they reasonable? Whether it's internal or external, you're going to be relying on them an awful lot. And you might have to take some of the pressure off. So what resilience have you got? Do you have safely stored copies of plans and key documents? Because if it's all online, you've now lost it. Where is your battle box? What do you have if the worst happens? What can you access? 
The next set of considerations comes under coordination and leadership. Who would form your cyber incident management team? You've got to sit and think about that. Because you're going to be asking people to do things they've probably never done before. And the pressure's on now because you've got access to nothing. You are not delivering the services for which the public expect. So this needs to be as slick as possible. And it's not going to be slick. It's going to be ugly. But who would form your incident management plan and why? How will you prioritise your actions? There's going to be an awful lot going on and an awful lot going wrong. You need to understand what your priorities are. How will you communicate your priorities? Through your organisation and beyond. Because all your traditional methods of communication are gone. What are you going to do? And how will you maintain the confidence and trust of your staff? Again, you're going to be asking them to do some really strange stuff. Work some extended hours. Come up with workarounds for all the systems they can't access. They need to be happy that you are leading this. And also don't forget, as well as all your client data, all your customer data you've lost, you've lost their data as well. HR, pension, payroll. So they're now worrying about their own cybersecurity. How could that be used against them? They need to have confidence in you. And we extend that. What is the human impact of this? How will you bring in additional support and expertise? Who will that be? Is it an external um, incident response team? They have a cost implication. Do you have arrangements with other organisations that perhaps you could swap staff? Something to consider. Now, everybody's going to be nose to the grindstone. So how will you make sure everyone, including you as leaders, have some time off? Yeah, uh, this is going to go on for a long time. People need to have rest. And it might need to be enforced because everybody's going to want to solve it. This could go on for weeks or months, or as we're going to hear at the end of this, years. What well-being and staff support will be in place? What is in place now? What can you increase? Because your staff are going to get you going again. You need to look after them. What can you do to minimise the impact on staff if and when this happens? You've got to look after them. Communication and reporting. Communication, the art of everything, isn't it? The answer to most things. Do you have a communications and media plan for a ransomware attack? It's horrible. And we all see those nonsense messages that come out in the press from organisations that have been subject of a ransomware attack. Oh, we take your data really important. Uh, we take the security of your data really importantly. Well, clearly you don't because you've lost it. Or the other one is, don't worry, we haven't lost your credit card data. All we've lost is your name, date of birth and address. Yeah, thanks very much. My credit card, I can change. My name, date of birth and address, I can't. Think about what your comms policy is going to be, what your media strategy is going to look like. Think about it now. Obviously, you'll need to change it because obviously it won't be completely fit for purpose. But don't start making it up when it's happened. Have some templates ready to go. How will citizens contact you? How will you get news out to all of the people you offer services to? Think about it. Have that plan. What about partners? Yeah, you've got limited IT. You've got partners involved in this. They're now concerned about you as part of their supply chain. How are you going to communicate with them? What safe systems have you got in place so that you can make contact with third parties that are important to you and they are convinced it's you? And that this isn't just an extension of the cyber attack by the criminals pretending they are you. Think about your supply chain and how you support each other. What reporting and briefing templates could you prepare in, in, in advance? Again, it's all about planning. This is no point in sat there when this is happening and having to start from scratch. At least have something to refer to and evolve. Now, finally, I'm going to directly quote the CEO of this local authority because I think the points that they make are really, really pertinent. At first, we didn't truly understand the impact and nature of the attack, how it wiped us out or what it actually means to an organisation to lose everything, including website, telephones, printing, laptops and databases. I asked myself, how do you... 
How do you in the modern age deliver a service if you've lost all of that? The next quote. The risks to service delivery, the toll on staff, the media pressure and the financial costs, the impacts across the organisation were huge. Over a year later, we still consider ourselves to be in some form of recovery. And his final quote was, council culture needs to change. The conversation needs to be had. Thank you for watching. This was the last video of the eShot Cybersecurity series in partnership with Soroku. If you're serious about your organization's cybersecurity, the cheat sheet is available on our website, top link in the description down below. And if you found this video useful, you may wish to consider liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel where you'll find the rest of the cybersecurity playlist. Stay safe, stay secure, bye-bye.